For some reason, when people talk about the hot versions of manufacturers' cars, the same names get thrown out. BMW's M Division, or AMG, or Audi's S Cars. For some reason, while Renault have won a Formula One World Championship or two, they're not really synonymous with performance. But they're looking to change that. Perhaps it's because the German tuners get so much press that they're top of mind, and Renault are following the same model. Not content with releasing two versions of the Megane RS, with a third one on the way, their hardcore garage also houses the Clio RS, the Clio RS 20th Anniversary Edition, the Twingo RS, and the Twingo RS Gordini. And now, the Clio RS Gordini. It's blue and white like all good Gordini cars should be. It's bedecked with F1 influence bits. It's got 17 inch wheels and twin exhaust pipes that are about the same size. It's got just about every performance enhancing piece of plastic you could think of, but it is missing something. I'm not sure if it's a weight saving measure, or a cost saving measure, or a resistance of the urge to jump on the LED daytime running light bandwagon, but it's the only thing the RS Gordini isn't fitted with. Despite that, it is a magnificent looking beast. It just means business from the second you lay eyes on it. It has that sort of crouched and ready to pounce look about it, with widened wheel arches, plastic parts covered in different paint and muscular dimensions. Renault Sport, who build this car, have taken the cute little French number known as the Clio and turned it into an angry little monster that looks like it wants to fight. and fight it will. Renault have dropped in a two liter motor, non-turbo, with 147 kilowatts and 215 Newton meters. It may not be the quickest thing on the road, but it just feels like it'll take on anything. Nought to 100 time is an impressive 6.9 seconds, the same as VW's turbo powered Polo GTI, and top speed is 225 kilometers an hour. This car has a lot in common with the now second from the top Clio RS, but the major change is the new cup chassis, which Renault Sport have fitted to improve handling. With all that power going through the front wheels, it's no surprise that the RS Gordini is given to understeer when you push it, but you really have to push it. Another improvement over the other RS models is the power delivery. In those cars, you had to really push it to the red line before you'd really feel the power coming on. But here, it just feels so much more instantly available. And that means this car is just so much more usable on the road or on the track. This little machine will still happily scream all the way up to the 7,000 RPM red line before beeping at you for a gear change. But the power comes in way before that and stays just about all the way through. Gordini was initially an independent company and later became the basis of Renault's RS division. In its 50 years of building potent versions of the French manufacturer's cars, it's learned a thing or two. And in this car, it feels like they've taken all those years of experience and distilled them into an engine and a gearbox and a chassis that combine almost perfectly to deliver a drive that's a mix of real performance and real fun. This car never fails to put a smile on your face, whether you're powering it through a corner or you're parking it and walking away as you arrive at the office. It is absolutely top of my list in this class. It is a true hot hatch, even though it doesn't play in the Golf GTI Focus ST range. Let me put it this way. If you've ever found yourself stuck in traffic behind any car that you might think is superior, the Clio RS Gordini manages to magically delete those feelings of inadequacy. It isn't the most powerful or expensive or most advanced, but it is a very special car indeed. Unfortunately, there are very few people who will buy one and reserve it exclusively for track day use, and that means we have to consider how the Clio performs on an everyday basis. And unfortunately, it does come up a bit short. The low profile tires are susceptible to potholes, the ride setup is extremely hard, and for a small car, the turning circle is embarrassingly big.
The interior manages a good balance between comfort and providing for what this car is really about. The big bucket seats and thick steering wheel merge very well with all the convenience of things like keyless entry, climate control, automatic lights and wipers and electric windows. The cup holders are in the wrong place, there aren't many convenient storage spots, and the gear shift smacks of aftermarket catalog. But you know what? It just doesn't matter. At 280,000 Rand, you pay a bit of a premium for this car over the regular contenders in its class, but it's worth every cent because it delivers performance and enjoyment in equal measure. You can keep your Polo GTIs or your Corsa OPCs. From now on, my motto is Allez les bleus! With a full 147 kilowatts to power a compact hatch, the incisive performance comes as no surprise. This really is a true pocket rocket. The Gordini looks also add some eye candy to the equation, while the cup chassis makes for exceptional handling. A hard ride is the only real downside, but we love it anyway.